Hey guys, how are you and welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time here, my name is Jordana and if not then thank you for coming back and taking the time to watch my videos. This is gonna be my no buy year, so I'm doing a no buy for makeup and beauty items from, from December 9, 2018 till December 9, 2019. So it's gonna be a year without purchasing makeup and I thought I would show you my inventory of makeup and today I thought to show you my powders. The powders that I'm gonna show you are different type of powders, but they're mostly translucent, color correcting powders, and also under eye setting powders. So if you wanna see my powder, my translucent powder makeup collection, then just keep on watching. The reason why I'm doing this series is because you guys need to know what products I'm starting with. I'm in a no buy, but if I run out of every product of one category, I'm allowed to repurchase or to purchase a new one from that category to not let it be empty. But since I have a ton, I don't think I will need to buy any powders. So let's go in with the powders. First category of powders that I'm gonna show you, I only have two, and these are under eye brightening powders. The first one is the Laura Mercier Secret Brightening Powder, and then the e.l.f. one. I never use them, I have two. When I finish them, I won't be repurchasing them. They look nice, but I don't really use them, so. The other color powders that I have are the Ben Nye Pretty Pink Powder, and the Retouching Powder by Bobbi Brown in the shade Pink. These powders are for brightening. Again, I never use them. The two times or three times that I used them, it was too pink under my eyes. So I need to learn how to use them or declutter them from my collection because I'm not gonna let them go to waste just in there and that's what they've been doing. So I'm gonna see if I find a way to use them and I will let you guys know. Maybe I'll put them in a project progress or shop my stash type of video. Another color powder is the Peach Powder by Bobbi Brown. Again, I never reach for this, I need to do it but it's another color powder that I have in my collection. These are basically, most of them, loose powders. For my yellow powder category, I have four. Three of them I use on my kit, and one of them I never reach for, but I need to see if I can use it on myself because I used to love it when I first got it. This is the Smashbox Halo Yellow Color Correcting Hydrating Powder. I find this to be too thick and not finely milled. That's why I don't like it anymore. This is my favorite so far for medium and yellow undertone skin tones for my kit. This is the Huda Beauty baking powder in the shade Blondie and I have it in another shade and I'm gonna show you later but this is a good powder to have on my kit and I find that when I finish these two I will get the darker color of the Huda Beauty for my kit instead of these two because I love the performance of this one better than any other powder that I have tried. I have here the Graftobian Professional Makeup Lux Cashmere HD Setting Powder in Banana Cream Pie. This is a light yellow powder and it works beautifully for darker skin tones. And when the skin tones are darker, darker, then I will go in with the Sacha Buttercup Setting Powder. The reason why I have yellow powders is because I'm a makeup artist. I have dark skin clients and I don't want them to look ashy using powders that are meant for light to medium skin tones. Four more powders that I use on my kit are first the Hourglass Mineral Bale or Bale Translucent Setting Powder. These I use for dry skin types on my clients. I can use it on myself because I get oily with it, but the finish is so beautiful and so flawless that I use it on aging skin and dry skin. And it looks wonderful on my clients. It works every time. It's the only powder that I have that actually works this beautifully on dry skin. I used to have on my kit the Perfect Setting Powder by Cover Effects, but this one is just way better. I also have the Laura Mercier Translucent, but the Medium Deep version, and this is also good for really deep skin tones. I think Laura Mercier needs to come out with a middle tone, because this is sometimes too dark for my tan clients, but the other one is too light. So they need to come up with a shade that goes in between, and I would just carry all three on my kit. This, this powder for pictures is perfect for people with oily skin, and in a humid place like this, this works wonders. This is a powder that I carry on my kit only for Halloween or when I need to do some stage makeup. That's the only time where I, when I carry it. This is from Cryoland and it's a Dermacolor Fixing Powder. This powder is waterproof and it's only for that purpose that I have it. The other powders do not set the Dermacolor creams as beautifully as this one. It was meant to work with that, so I only use it on my kit. 
and I only use it seasonally. It will last me forever. And then I have here on this Laura Mercier pod, the RCMA No Color Powder. This powder, I don't like. I will keep using it. I use it to set the lids. I use it to clean, to buff, to remove excess, blush, to do whatever, because I need to go through it. But it's not my favorite powder, and I will never repurchase it. I just need to go through it. It's affordable, but it's not amazing. Another one that I use on my kit and on myself is the Huda Beauty Pound Cake Powder, but I mostly use it on my kit. And this has been my main powder for my clients. And you can see right here, it's already halfway gone. And I didn't purchase it that long ago. But Blondie and this one are my staples for baking or for just setting the face. They look flawless and they give a finish of poreless skin without looking powdery and cakey on top of makeup. So these are good powders. I would have a few of the other colors if I didn't have this many powders that I don't really need in my collection. I would have only Huda Beauty, or if Laura Mercier came up with a medium shade, only Laura Mercier powders, and that would be it with the Hourglass and the Dermacolor one. You guys have to keep in mind that I'm a makeup artist. I need to have my kit prepared for anything, and I only have on my kit what I know that works for me, and the powders that I've purchased that are not for my skin type, the reason why I've gotten them, is because at one point I've needed them and I don't want to leave any client out of my makeup kit. For samples, I have three. And the first one is the Makeup Forever HD Powder. This is a small size sample. I've had this before. I finished the complete thing years ago and it's not my favorite. It makes you look poreless. It sucks for pictures. It can give you a white cast pretty easy. But I think this could be a good powder for an everyday. My mom recently gave me the Bye Bye Pores Illumination Poreless Finish Airbrush Powder. And these I haven't tried yet. I used to have a sample of the regular one without the illumination in the powder. But I liked it. I wasn't obsessed with it, but I really liked it. So maybe this will work. And if not, the illuminating powders always work for my kit. Then Laura Mercier came up with a luminous powder, translucent luminous powder. I want to know if you guys have tried this and if you have used it as highlighter or if I can use it in case I finish my hourglass translucent powder for dry skin clients. Let me know in the comments below. I would love to know. If not, I will anyway try it on myself and see how it works. But I want to see if it's too luminous to be just a setting powder and if it can be a glassy type of skin powder. Let me know in the comments below if you know anything about it. But this is a point perk or a coupon that I got at Sephora. And now for my powders, the ones that I use mostly on myself. Sometimes I will carry them on my kit, but they're mostly for me, personal use, except for this one. These I goes back and forth. This is the Laura Mercier Translucent. This is a staple. I prefer this for brides. Brides look beautiful with it. It photographs beautifully. It's just an amazing powder. I think it's one of the best formulas for, for oily skin types. It keeps your oils at bay, but it doesn't make you look cakey, at least not for me. And a lot of my clients are way oilier than me. One that I've gone through a few since I started using it, and I always have to have this in my collection, is one of the best powders I've tried from the drugstore. It's one of the best powders I've tried in general, but it's from the drugstore. It's just that sometimes I feel like it changes the color of the foundation. If not, this would be the powder for my kit because it's so affordable, so good, and it comes with a ton of products. This is the Airspun Loose Face Powder in the shade Naturally Neutral. I've tried it in Translucent, in Translucent Extra Coverage, and in Naturally Neutral. Naturally Neutral is my favorite shade. That's the one that I always use on myself, and it looks beautiful on myself. But when I've tried it on friends, because I always use my friends as guinea pigs if I want to add a product to my kit. So this powder, the colors do not work for everyone. That's why I don't use them because I would have to buy every shade. So this is a good one. If you find your shade, definitely use it. It's super affordable. It comes with a lot of product. It makes your skin look flawless and poreless. I might need to do a shop my stash and use it again because I've gone through a few throughout the years. One that I like but I will not be repurchasing. I've been using it lately a ton. It's the Marc Jacobs Finish Line Invisible Perfecting Coconut Setting Powder. The reason why I don't like it is mainly because of the mesh. 
but the thing is that it looks beautiful as soon as I apply it. It's nice, but it doesn't keep my oils at bay as much as I need it. So I will finish it. I liked it, but I didn't love it. So I wouldn't recommend it if you have really oily skin. If you're a normal skin type, the smell is beautiful. The finish is really nice. It looks beautiful on the skin when you first apply it, but my nose is so oily and this doesn't hold my oils. None of these powders really keep my oils forever at bay, but this one is just less long lasting than others that I have here in my collection. This powder used to be a favorite. That's why I repurchased it. But then I think I bought a shade that was too dark for me. I actually finished this one of these before, but I think I got another shade. This is the Makeup Forever Super Matte Loose Powder. I will use this when I have fake tan on, and I know I will finish it because I've been doing a pretty good job of finishing it up. You can see right here that I have less than half gone, and it's a good powder. It's a really nice matte powder, but I prefer the Airspun powder, the Laura Mercier one, and another one that I'm gonna show you and the Huda Beauty one. So if that's not even top three, then it's not worth having it in my collection. I'm just gonna finish it and say goodbye to it. This is the one that I've been using every day and sometimes I've been rotating the Marc Jacobs, but this is one of those powders that I know that when I finish it, I will miss it. Like my Laura Mercier, my Huda, my Airspun, this is up there. This is perfection of a powder. This is the Peach Perfect by Too Faced powder and I'm gonna show you how low it is. It's right here. This comes with a huge amount of powder so the value is really nice. The scent is amazing. It makes you look poreless. I would like to put this on my kit but it has a peachy type of tone and it doesn't work for everyone. It works for myself but sometimes when I'm setting my foundation it changes the color a little bit. I don't mind it. I know how to fix it but on clients, I don't want to go through the hassle of having to fix the skin tone when I already did the job with the foundation. It works for you. It really keeps you matte for longer. You can use a light hand with it. You can bake with it and it will look beautiful and flawless and poreless. So yeah, this is a good one and I know I'm going to miss it when it's gone. But I have to finish it in order to go through the rest of them. And then I can just have the four or the three that I love the most in my collection and that's perfect for me. And then last but not least, this is sort of a treasure for me. This is the La Mer Original Powder, the powder, and I love this to set my face when I want to look perfect, and I love this to buff my skin from time to time because I treasure it. It's a powder that's discontinued, and I bought it, and I think the next month was discontinued. They came up with a new one, but it's not the best one. That's what I've heard. So since I know I won't be able to repurchase it, and I love the finish so much that I use it sparingly, it's sort of my pampering type of powder. So I love having it in my collection. It's not something that I use every day. It's something that I treasure and it makes me feel nice from time to time when I use it. So for translucent powder, including colored ones like yellow, peach, pink, under eye setting powders, and just translucent powders in general, luminous and matte for my kit and for myself. I have 23 powders and I'm sorry to say that these are not the only powders that I have. I will have another collection video showing you my powders with color that I have, loose and pressed. And you will see that I have enough powder to last me a lifetime. I know that I will at one point run out of translucent powder. I don't think this year, but maybe the next one, but I don't feel the need to purchase any other powder unless it's that I don't have either the Huda Beauty or the Laura Mercier translucent powder for my kit. I don't really think I need to buy any other powders and the hourglass powder. I don't foresee a future without yellow powder. I have three. I don't foresee a future without pink powder, peach powder, and I wouldn't repurchase those. I wouldn't repurchase the under eye setting powders. So I'm good. I'm good with powders. I have I'm happy to say that there's a few that I would like to try, but this is not the year to try things. This is the year to finish things. And that's gonna be my motto for the year. That's it guys, don't forget to subscribe. Let me know how many powders, translucent powders and colored powders you have in your collection, or if you don't have any, or if you have pinks and yellows and peaches, how, what do you use them for and how do you apply them? It was nice to see you guys. I hope you enjoy my no buy videos and my collection and inventory videos. So I guess I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.